Hey everyone, this is Paul from Ortho Eval Pal, and today what I want to do is I want to talk about the six most common sources of outer ankle pain. Now we're going to be discussing more of the structural parts of the outer ankle, um, and again, this is more for assistance in identifying different issues that can be going on on the outer side of the ankle. Um, but I thought what I would do is talk about the six most common that we typically see. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to kind of get you oriented. There's this fibular bone right here, okay? And you can see where I have it outlined. And uh, that is where we have many attachments and we're just gonna use that as a landmark right now just so we can get started. But the number one reason people have outer ankle pain is because they can sprain their ankle. And when the ankle is turned inward and pointed down like this, you can tear this little ligament down here called the calcaneal fibular ligament and also this anterior talar fibular ligament right here. Those are the two most common. So you can see as, if, as the ankle drops like this, you can tear these. Sometimes it can be quite severe where you develop a significant amount of bruising and some instability of your ankle. So after you sprain your ankle, it may roll really easy after that. If that happens, you really need to have that addressed um, either in therapy or um, see a foot and ankle surgeon or an orthopedic surgeon to have that addressed to make sure that that doesn't stay too loose for too long. All right. The next thing that we can commonly see is something called a peroneal tendon injury. Okay, so if we follow the back of this bone right here, we come on down here, we have this tendon called the peroneal tendon. We have a longus and a brevis, and that comes right down into this area right here. Now, this can become inflamed and irritated and cause a lot of discomfort, typically increasing mileage when you're running or walking um, or maybe walking on uneven ground. Uh, hiking, anything that's unusual that puts an extra strain on that tendon can cause some inflammation. So generally tender from the tip of this bone here all the way along this tendon, okay? And there's a sheath around it that can get very easily inflamed and irritated. The other thing that can happen is this tendon has a little sheath over it right over here that helps to hold it in the groove. And sometimes that little sheath can tear. And what can happen is the tendon can flop up over the top of this bone and do something we call sublux, which means that it kind of pops in, pops out, pops in, pops out. Or you can dislocate this tendon where it actually comes out and pops up over this bone and ends up up here. Okay, and that can be extremely painful and cause a lot of instability and sometimes has to be surgically fixed. Um, but I have seen many people with it. I do have videos about this and one of the ways we manage it is with a nice ankle stabilization brace. Okay, and that um, can make a big difference in regards to stabilizing it and allowing that to heal a little bit in there. All right, now the next thing that we see can be a fracture or there's a break of this fibula, okay? So when you sprain that ankle really aggressively, these ligaments can pull really hard and can actually break that fibula and cause it to, you know, become uh, a, a separate section right here. We've seen people sprain their ankles and fracture this fibula anywhere up along the fibula, okay? So that is something else that we see. Now, one of the ways we identify that is we just touch over the top, we palpate that bone and we keep following it. And sometimes you'll see this significant amount of tenderness right at the bottom here, okay? And that can be signs of a fracture. Interestingly enough, when people fracture that fibula, you can still walk on it, okay? Because it's not a weight bearing bone, you bear more of your weight on the tibia on the inside. So a lot of people actually go with a fractured fibula for quite a while before they have it addressed. They find that it's, you know, it continues to be painful and swollen in that area and can be quite incapacitating, but they still function, okay? And so identifying that and getting this rested either in a cast or in a walker boot can really help to get that settled down. Now, the next thing I'd like to talk about is Something that I think gets missed quite often um, and misdiagnosed as an ankle sprain and it's called the sinus tarsi syndrome. So if you find the end of the fibula and you move forward into this little gully right here and I'm going to put a circle where it is right there. 
That is called the sinus tarsi. And what happens here is if you have chronic ankle sprains, you can cause a significant amount of inflammation in this little area. But what happens also is that if you have a flat foot, your foot can turn out like this and you end up with this pinch in here. And that can kind of bind up quite a bit often because people don't have great flexibility of their calf muscle. So what they have to do is they have to collapse the foot and compress that area. And that can be very painful, very easily treated with um, orthotics. It doesn't need to be custom, but semi-custom orthotics are, uh, can be fine. And trying to decrease that inflammation in there with modalities, sometimes an injection uh, can help. And then strengthening all the muscles on the inside of the foot and ankle to get it to hold out here so that it doesn't continue to pinch in that position right here. Now, something that is a little less common is something called a sural nerve entrapment. You have this nerve that comes down the back of your leg here, and it branches off to the outside part of the ankle down into the outside part of the foot. Sometimes if you have a trauma to the outer calf or the backside of this part of the calf, that can cause an irritation to that nerve, which will cause a burning and tingling sensation down into this part of the foot. Um, that can be quite annoying and quite painful. Um, the other thing that we see are maybe people who are starting to exercise a lot and really starting to see a lot of bulk in that calf muscle. That muscle can push on that nerve and cause this tingling and burning sensation and pain around the outer side of the ankle. Commonly re-irritated by poking around up here. And these can respond really well to nerve gliding exercises, which we also have some videos of. Um, and the last thing that I want to talk about is a Taylor dome lesion. Inside this part of the ankle is a basically a dome like this where the ankle comes together like that. And if you sprain your ankle or twist the ankle, sometimes you can break off a piece of cartilage on the inside of that joint, which resides right in here. And it causes swelling throughout the ankle, not just to the outer ankle, but can be throughout the ankle. And sometimes can be very painful inside the joint, basically between these two fingers right here inside. So if you've had an ankle sprain, if you twisted your ankle and this ankle sprain just doesn't start to come around, um, it's important that you have that checked because it's possible that you could have torn a piece of cartilage in there and um, we call that a Taylor dome lesion. So there you have it. We have our six most common causes of outer ankle pain. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Be sure to check out some of our videos that we do to treat foot and ankle instability or ankle sprains or plantar fasciitis. Um, just have to YouTube Paul Marquis and the diagnosis and uh, the injured area and it should uh, just pop right up. So hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Thanks.